Hello and welcome to this video on the definition and properties of 2D shapes. Now let's first consider two different types of 2D shapes you can have. You can have polygons and the definition of a polygon is a 2D shape with straight edges. So if I draw a polygon it could be like this and we can see all these edges, these are the edges we can see that they are all straight, they're not curved. And by the way, we call each of the corners of a polygon a vertex. And the plural of vertex is vertices, spelt like this, V-E-R-T-I-C-E-S. So we've got edges, which are the lines, and we've got vertices, which are the corners. And a polygon is just a 2D shape with straight edges. And then we've got other curved shapes as well. So we have things like a circle, for example. We could have um, an oval, or the posh mathematical name for that is an ellipse. We could have sort of a crescent shape, etc. Now let's consider the names of the different polygons with different numbers of sides. If we had a three-sided polygon, then you might be familiar with the name of triangle. A triangle is just a three-sided polygon. And you may know there's three different types of triangle. If all the sides of the triangle are of equal length, we call that an equilateral triangle, equi meaning same, or it could be that two of the lengths are the same. And by the way, these little marks here on the edges are saying that these are the same length. So if two of the edges are the same, then it's called isosceles. And we'll explore isosceles triangles in a later video. And if all the sides are different, then it's called a scalene triangle. Then we've got four-sided polygons, which are known as quadrilaterals. And we'll explore more about quadrilaterals in a second. Quad meaning four. For example, quad bike is a four-wheeled bike. And then five is a pentagon, which obviously looks something like this. Then a six-sided polygon is a hexagon. Seven-sided is heptagon. Apparently you're allowed to say septagon, but I've never heard that myself. So heptagon, you may have heard in the Olympics an event called the heptathlon, and that consists of seven events. Just like a pentathlon consists of five events. Then we've got, which is an octagon. An octopus has eight legs, oct means eight. Uh, nine is a nonagon. Ten-sided is a decagon. Dec meaning ten. Like, for example, when we say the decimal system, the deck there means 10 because for each digit we can have 10 possible different values. I'm not going to name 11 because no one ever uses that word, but 12-sided is a dodecagon. And then the only other common name is a 20-sided polygon, which is called an icosagon. Icosa meaning 20. But basically it would be helpful to know all the names of these different polygons up to 10-sided. And of polygons, we have two different types. We've got regular polygons, and we've got irregular polygons. So regular polygons, all angles and side lengths are equal. So for example, if we had a regular triangle, we'd have a triangle where all the side lengths and all the angles are equal, and we'd know that would be called an equilateral triangle. Just like a regular quadrilateral, well, what's a four-sided shape where all the lengths and all the angles are the same? That would have to be a square, wouldn't it? And then irregular, well, if we had a regular triangle, the lengths and the angles are not all going to be the same. Now let's go on to the properties of different quadrilaterals. We've got the shapes here that you need to know, and we're going to look at the definition of each. Now what is this shape here? Well, you might recognise that as being a rectangle. But what is the definition of rectangle? You probably recognise it, but you might know what the exact definition is. And the definition is it's a quadrilateral. I'm not going to write it's a quadrilateral which because we're considering the quadrilaterals. But it's a quadrilateral where all the angles are equal and they will all be 90 degrees if they're all equal. So that's the definition of a rectangle. Now let's consider the number of lines of symmetry it has. Now we could find a line of symmetry here. That's a line of symmetry, because if I was to reflect this bit of the shape onto the other side, we'd get the same. And we've also got a line of symmetry here. But we don't have that diagonal as a line of symmetry, because if I was to draw it up here, if I had these two sides of the rectangle 
and I reflect it in this line of symmetry, you would actually get something like this, which is actually a kite, not a rectangle, which is a shape we'll see later. So the minimum number of lines of symmetry is two. It always has two lines of symmetry. Do the diagonals cross at right angles? Now, what I mean by the diagonal of a quadrilateral is if I have a 2D shape like this, the diagonals are the lines which connect opposite vertices. So this is known as a diagonal. You can have diagonals of shapes with more sides as well, but it's just basically a line which connects two vertices of the shape that is not an edge. So we're not allowed to connect these two, for example, because that's an edge, not a diagonal. So it goes through the shape. So let's consider the diagonals of a rectangle. If we draw one, this is one diagonal. This is the other diagonal. Now, is that angle between those diagonals a right angle? Well, that angle we can clearly see is more than 90 degrees, and that angle there is less than 90 degrees, so the answer is no. And what's the number of parallel sides? Well, sides are parallel if they're going in the same direction. So we can see that these edges are in the same direction. They're traveling the same direction. They never meet. So we've got one pair of parallel sides here, and we've got one pair of parallel sides here. So it has two pairs of parallel sides. That should really say minimum number of pairs of parallel sides. And what about rotational symmetry? Remember that rotational symmetry is how many times we can rotate the shape and see the same. Well, if we were to spin that upside down, we would see the same rectangle, and then we can spin it back to get to the original. So that the original shape counts as one, then we spin it, and we see the same shape again. So its rotational symmetry is of order two. Right, what about this? Well, that's obviously a square. But what is the definition of a square? Well, it's basically a special case of a rectangle, because um, a square certainly satisfies the definition that all the angles are 90, these are all 90 degrees, right angles, but it has an additional restriction that all the sides have to be the same length. So all the angles are 90 degrees, and all lengths are the same. Now, what's the minimum number of lines of symmetry? Let's draw it again. We have that as a line of symmetry, that as a line of symmetry, and this time the diagonals are lines of symmetry. So we have four lines of symmetry. Do the diagonals cross at right angles? Well, that's one diagonal. That's the other diagonal connecting the opposite corners. And well, yes, that is a right angle there. So the answer is yes. What's the minimum number of pairs of parallel sides? Well, we've got a pair of parallel sides going in that direction. And we've got a pair of parallel sides like that. They're in the same direction. So the answer is two. And what's the order of rotational symmetry? Well, I can take the original shape, I can spin it 90 degrees, we see a square again, spin it 90 degrees again, we see a square again, spin it 90 degrees again, we see a square again. So rotational symmetry is order four. And in general, when you have a regular polygon, and this is regular because all the angles and the side lengths are the same, the order of rotational symmetry is the same as the number of sides. So it's a four-sided regular polygon, so it has an order of rotational symmetry of four. What about this shape? Well, we can think of this as a kind of flattened rectangle. It's like someone sat on this rectangle and it's slightly sheared to one side. And we call that a parallelogram. Notice the spelling, it's quite difficult to spell. There's two L's there, but only one L there, and it's parallelogram, not a gram. And the definition is that it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Now, what about the minimum number of lines of symmetry? Well, that's not a line of symmetry. That's not a line of symmetry. We don't have any lines of symmetry at all. I say minimum number of lines of symmetry because technically a square, for example, does have two pairs of parallel sides. So a square is technically a parallelogram and a square obviously has four lines of symmetry. So we're, we're looking for the minimum number of lines of symmetry when we don't have one of these kind of special cases of a parallelogram. Do the diagonals cross at right angles? Well, that's one diagonal, that's the other diagonal. That angle there is more than a right angle. We can see in that angle there is less than a right angle, so the answer is no. What's the minimum number of pairs of parallel sides? Well, by definition, by being a parallelogram, it has two pairs of parallel sides. But rotational symmetry, well, yes, we can spin this upside down, and we would see the same shape. So it has rotational symmetry of order two. What about the next shape? This time we have a flattened square. So someone sat on this square and we've got this shape and this is known as a rhombus. And the reason it's a flattened square is because just like a square, all the sides are of the same length. 
So just the definition of a rhombus is that all side lengths are equal. And a square satisfies that definition. A square has all side lengths which are equal, and it's a quadrilateral. So a square is actually a special case of a rhombus. And a rhombus is actually a special case of parallelogram because a rhombus satisfies the definition that it has two pairs of parallel sides. What is the minimum number of lines of symmetry? Well, let's draw it again, making sure the side lengths are equal. Well, actually, that is a line of symmetry this time. That is also a line of symmetry. So the answer is two. It has two lines of symmetry. Do the diagonals cross at right angles? Well, if we look at this angle here, that is a right angle. So the answer is yes. What's the minimum number of parallel sides? Well, it's two, just like a parallelogram. And what is the minimum order of rotational symmetry? Well, we could spin it upside down and see the same, so the answer is two. Now, what's this? This seems to have one pair of parallel sides, and it is known as a trapezium. And for any American viewers, you know that as a trapezoid, and the definition is that it has a pair of parallel sides. Now, there's a massive amount of debate about the exact definition of a trapezium. Some people say that it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So a parallelogram, for example, wouldn't be a trapezium because it doesn't have exactly one pair of parallel sides. It has two pairs of parallel sides. But others, including myself, would argue that it just has to have a pair of parallel sides, which could be two pairs of parallel sides. So I would argue that actually a parallelogram is a special case of a trapezium, but I'm not going to go through my reasoning here. But usually you would see it as having exactly one pair of parallel sides. Now what's the minimum number of lines of symmetry? Well if I draw a trapezium like this, well that doesn't have a line of symmetry. That's not a line of symmetry there, is it? Because that's kind of longer, more sticky out than that side. So the answer is zero. It might be that it has a line of symmetry. For example, if I made that length equal to that length and got rid of this, we could see it would have a line of symmetry. But in general, we might not have any lines of symmetry, so the minimum number is zero. Do the diagonals cross at right angles? Well, if I draw that same trapezium again, and I connect these two and these two, well, that angle there is more than 90 degrees. The answer is no. What's the minimum number of parallel sides? Well, one, by definition of being a trapezium, it has at least one pair of parallel sides, or as some argue, exactly one pair of parallel sides. And the minimum order of rotational symmetry, well, if we take this one, if we rotate it upside down, for example, we're not going to see the same shape. So in fact, it has no rotational symmetry, so its order is one. And what about the last shape? This is known as a kite. It looks like a kite. And the definition of this is quite complicated. Basically, we have two pairs of adjacent sides with equal lengths. So we can see these two adjacent sides, and by adjacent I mean next to each other, those two adjacent sides have equal length, and those two adjacent sides have equal length. So it has two pairs of adjacent sides with equal length. Sorry, a bit squished there. Now, what's the minimum number of lines of symmetry? Well, if I draw it again, we can see that if I cut the kite in half like that, that is a line of symmetry, but this is not a line of symmetry here. So it has at least one line of symmetry. And do the diagonals cross at right angles? Well, this is the other diagonal, and we can see, look, that is a right angle there, so the answer is yes. Now, what's the minimum number of parallel sides? Well, this kite here doesn't have any parallel sides, so the answer is zero. And what's the minimum order of rotational symmetry? Well, we can't rotate a kite without turning it fully around. Um, so the rotational symmetry is of just of order one, just the original shape. And that is all the quadrilaterals.